Who should head to Capitol Hill? A debate for Congress to help you weigh your vote. Broadcasting live on TV and news sites across eastern Kansas, Topeka Mayor Michelle De La Isla, a Democrat, takes on Republican State Treasurer Jake LaTurner, coronavirus restrictions, health care, and police brutality. Tonight, we get the candidates' thoughts on the tough issues facing our nation's lawmakers. And now, the moderator of tonight's debate, political analyst Bob Beatty. Well, greetings and welcome to the 2nd District Congressional Debate. The two candidates and myself are more than six feet apart, and we are following coronavirus protocols to make this debate not only informative, but safe. The rules are few and relatively simple. Each candidate will have up to 45 seconds to answer a question. After both candidates have answered, we'll have time for follow-ups and discussion on that topic. At the end of the debate, each candidate will give a closing statement. Candidate order was decided by a random spin and will rotate throughout the debate. So let's get right to it, and we're going to start with Mr. LaTurner. This election will no doubt forever be known as the pandemic election. It has upended every aspect of our lives, and by election day, the United States could be approaching a quarter of a million dead. It has also caused the political schism in the country around safety measures, with some leaders discounting CDC guidelines and others abiding by them. Tell voters where you stand on the issue of whether U.S. leaders have united the country or divided it, and why you're best qualified to enter Congress during one of the greatest crises in U.S. history. Mr. LaTurner? COVID is a critical issue. It is affecting every family throughout the 2nd Congressional District. If you are elderly, uh, you're nervous about going out. Uh, if you have school-aged children like Suzanne and I do, uh, it's been an awkward uh, path back to the classroom. I believe that we need to do what the CDC recommends. We need to wash our hands, we need to social distance, we need to wear face masks. We have to get this problem solved. We need a vaccine, we need it immediately, we need to put the resources into getting that done. We need to bring our supply chain back from China and produce medications here in the United States. The reason we've got to do this so fast is that people are hurting, people are dying, and we have to get this economy back up and running. There are Kansans today that are out of work to no fault of their own. And I want you to know out there tonight that I will support you and we will get the job done. Michelle De La Isla. Thank you so much. Great to be here. I would say that the question was, do I feel that our leaders have united or divided? And as mayor of the city of Topeka, collaborating with the Shawnee County Emergency Management Team, I can tell you that it has been extremely difficult to get the message across because leaders at the federal level have been talking about how the virus is not as serious. And we in the community are trying to ensure that people understand that the risk is real. So I think that one of the things that we must work on is ensuring that we follow the science, ensuring that we are respecting the threat because the coronavirus is not just a health issue. It is an economic issue as well. And the sooner we all come together as a country to tackle this issue, we will be able to overcome it and have healthier communities. Mr. LaTurner, do you have a follow-up to that? Uh, I, I think that it is critical that we get this job done and get it done quickly. We need to put the resources behind developing a vaccine. We need it before the end of the year. We need to develop therapeutics. And it is critical that we bring the supply chain back home from China. China has not been a good partner to the United States when it comes to COVID-19. Uh, and we need to make sure that we are, or we are manufacturing our own medications here in this country. It's very important. Ms. De La Isla, follow-up to that? No. But then a quick question. Uh, why do you think the U.S. has such a high per capita death rate compared to other countries? Maybe 15 seconds on that, Ms. DeLisa. Thank you. I think that the problem has been the lack of information happening when our top leadership is telling the country that this virus is not as deadly. Even after contracting the virus, saying don't let it control your life, it sends a mixed message. We must listen to our scientists. We must work together in our communities to eliminate this threat. Sheila Turner. We need to follow the CDC guidelines. People need to social distance, they need to wear masks, they need to wash their hands. Uh, it's important that we follow the science. Uh, I agree with that comment. All right, speaking of the CDC, next question is there's a new report out that the CDC wanted to require masks on all forms of public transportation in the United States, but the White House blocked it. Do you believe in coronavirus safety measures such as, such as this, and should there be some national or state coordination like the CDC wanted? And we start with Michelle De La Isla. 
I absolutely believe that we must follow the science and the CDC is there to provide guidelines. I think that this is best let to be managed at the local level. I admire Governor Kelly when she decided to make sure that we had a mask mandate so that everybody in our community stayed safe. But that was something that was dealt locally and I do appreciate the CDC providing that guidance but it's something that we can absolutely take care of locally. The top of the Democrat ticket supports a national mask mandate. I think that would be a big mistake. This needs to be dealt with uh, at a state and local level. People are going to act in their self-interests, and I think you're going to see this as a difference of opinion between the mayor and I tonight. I, again and again and again, will support you to make decisions that are in your best interest. I start with the idea that people are smart, they're going to act in their self-interest. I don't think that the federal government needs to come in here and, uh, and tell everyone what to do. People are smart. Do you have a response? Absolutely. You see, it's interesting that that's being said to me, considering the fact that as mayor of Topeka, I have been advocating to have at the city level and the county level leadership ability so that we are able to communicate directly with our constituents. So much so that I work on a regular basis with businesses, with churches, and with different leaders as well as schools to ensure that they are having the proper information so that they are able to make that decision. Mr. Turner, anything else? I think having the information is, is great. I just don't think that we need a national mask mandate. All right, next question. Both of you are running negative ads against each other. Jake LaTurner is calling Michelle De La Isla a radical, while Michelle De La Isla is associating Jake LaTurner with former Kansas Governor Sam Brownback. How do you respond to your opponent's characterization of you? And we start with Mr. LaTurner. Uh, Governor Brownback is now Ambassador Brownback and uh, represents our country in defending uh, religious freedom for, um, uh, for persecuted people throughout this country. He hasn't been governor for the last three years. Uh, what I think is far more relevant uh, is who's backing Mayor De La Isla and her campaign because the people aren't former elected officials, they're current elected officials. Those people are Nancy Pelosi, those people are Adam Schiff, those people that want to take this country down a very radical path. Uh, and I think that is a far more relevant topic tonight uh, than, uh, than trying to, uh, uh, to do what the, the mayor is doing. There's also another piece of that ad where the mayor is absolutely dishonest when she says that I don't support covering pre-existing conditions. The people of the 2nd District can count on me every single time to support covering pre-existing pre conditions in Congress. Steve Lisa? I would like to remind Mr. Leturner that he and Sam Brownback, while they were both in office, voted to get rid of Medicaid and did not expand Medicaid in our state. Our state and our district right now have four hospitals that have closed. We have several thousands deaths. We have 150,000 Kansas that remain without insurance. And with regards to my messaging, the, the video that was made on me was distasteful and full of lies. I was walking with my chief of police. I was actually advocating. If you look at the Twitter page of the police department, they said this is what we are about. And it was sad that a video in which I was talking about how we are not defunding the police because I am not defunding the police was utilized and spliced to make a very negative and false point. This, this is an important distinction in this race. Let me quote the mayor directly. Quote, defunding the police is a very bad marketing term because what it means is what the city of Topeka has already been doing as practice for the last two years, end quote. You don't have to take my word for it. These are the words of the mayor. And folks can go to michelledefundsthepolice.com and watch the full unedited clip so people can see for themselves. This is a critical issue, and the mayor should answer for all of us. If she doesn't support defunding the police, why did she say it? If she doesn't support defunding the police, why are all of these national liberal politicians that support defunding the police sending in tens of thousands of dollars to support the mayor's campaign? Ms. De Laysa. I have said various times, and I will repeat it again, I do not support defunding the police under my leadership. The city of Topeka Police Department has a budget that now surpassed $40 million. Under my leadership as mayor, we have increased $5 million that budget. Mr. LaTurner. If you want to know how Mayor De is supporting the police, talk to the men and women that are on the front lines in police here in Topeka. They do not feel the support. When I talk about people at the national level supporting Michelle De Isla's campaign, I'm talking about Nancy Pelosi, for one, who sent in hundreds of thousands of dollars to win this race. She just That is false. The same week that she sent $100,000 in to support Mayor De La Isla's campaign is the same week that she supported cutting $600 million from the COPS plan that supports retaining and recruiting quality police officers in this country. 
That allegation is false. Nancy Pelosi has not sent hundreds of thousands of dollars to my campaign. If that were the case, uh, we, we would not be fundraising as hard as we are. Nancy Pelosi sent $100,000 into your campaign. That is a fact, verifiable. You can look it up. Uh, All right, that ends the first segment of the debate. We will return after this break for more questions and answers from these two candidates running to be your representative in Congress for the second district. Start feeling all right with a smile that fits your life at Aspen Dental. Our best price on dentures is back, starting at $2.99 per arch for a limited time. We craft them on site, so they never leave our site, and they're yours in as little as a day. Right fit, right quality, right price. Dentures starting at $2.99 per arch, only through October 31st, only at Aspen Dental. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL seven days a week or book online today. Great Bend, Kansas, served by a community nonprofit hospital for generations until Roger Marshall stepped in. Marshall and his family saw opportunity to make millions, so they opened a private for profit hospital, which eventually drove the nonprofit out of business. Then Marshall and his wife cashed in when their hospital sold for more than $24 million. When it comes to health care, Roger Marshall is all about the money, not you. Duty and Country is responsible for the content of this ad. CashNetUSA.com, man. I help when money's tight. If approved, you may get the money you need as soon as the same business day. Get the cash you need fast. Apply online today. Go to CashNetUSA.com. Money's on the way with CashNetUSA. BOGO. BOGO. It's the BOGO sale at Carpet One. Buy one square foot of floor and get one free. Choose hardwood, ceramic tile, natural stone, luxury vinyl, and carpet. Buy one, get one free. Choose in stock colors and styles. Buy one square foot, get the second square foot free. The more you buy, the more you save. Plus, get no interest financing for three years. It's the BOGO sale. Buy one square foot of flooring, get one free. Now at Carpet One. We make it beautiful for less. Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant, 37th in Kansas. Blind Tiger Brewery, the place for steaks. We not only brew award-winning fresh local beer, we also feature tender, mouth-watering steak. USDA choice sirloin, ribeye and filet, hand cut in the Blind Tiger kitchen and grilled to order. Serving Topeka great food to family and friends for many years. Mmm, that's good. Blind Tiger Brewery and Restaurant, 37th in Kansas. KSNT News, Kansas Association of Broadcasters, best prime newscast, best local weathercast, and best local sportscast. KSNT News, local news that matters. Welcome back to the second district congressional debate between Republican Jake LaTurner and Democrat Michelle De La Isla. So now the topic is health care, health care and the question will go to Michelle De La Isla. Republicans in Congress have, for years, been trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act, while Democrats have been, for years, in Kansas, trying to enhance it in Kansas by expanding Medicaid in the state. If you get to Congress, do you plan to vote to repeal Obamacare? or vote to enhance it and lend your voice to push Kansas to expand Medicaid. And again, we start with Michelle De La Isla. When I started in that campaign trail, one of the first things I did was send letters out to the community to hear what the issues were that mattered. And this was before the pandemic. The number one issue was health care. You see, under Mr. LaTurner, Mr. LaTurner and Sam Brownback both defunded and did not let us expand Medicaid. We have four hospitals closed, and Kansas are asking for expansion of Medicaid. They need to ensure that they have access to good health care. And if we didn't think that that was important, the pandemic was a rude awakening, letting us know how across the country we have over 210,000 souls that have died, and most of them are individuals that did not have access to preventative care. I am committed to ensuring that the Affordable Care Act is not only available, but the dollars that come to the states are as well. Mr. LaTurner. This is a very important issue, and we need people that are willing to work hard on it. My opponent, Mayor De La Isla, supports a public option. If you care about rural hospitals staying open in Kansas, you should not support Mayor De La Isla. A public option will devastate our rural hospitals. I support what I hear from Kansans every single day. They are worried about surprise billing. They want the ability to choose their own doctor. 
they want to make sure that pre-existing conditions are covered. I will make sure that that is the case. I will not support a policy proposal in Washington, D.C. that doesn't cover pre-existing conditions. Ms. De La Isla, do you have a follow-up? There seems to be a lot of talk about pre-existing conditions, but there seems to be no plan. And so much so, the hospitals are so in need of Medicaid expansion that the Kansas Hospital Association has worked with hospitals to ensure that the 10% that is left to cover Medicaid expansion is covered by our hospitals. That is how bad our hospitals want to ensure that we have Medicaid in Kansas. Mr. LaTurner? People are terribly concerned with the rising cost of health care. Premiums are going up. Choice is going down. We need a health care system that is centered around the patients and the patient's ability to make decisions. We need price transparency so we end surprise billing. We need to make sure that people always have the ability to choose their own doctor. And we have to make sure pre-existing conditions are covered. I will do that. Anything else, Ms. Elisa? No? All right, we move on to the next question. While the U.S. deals with a pandemic, it is also dealing with a serious moment surrounding the race issue, including, but not limited to, the experience of people of color in their interactions with police and the criminal justice system. Please tell the voters, in the nearly five months since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, what thoughts have you given to how America can become a more just and fair society for all its citizens? And we start with Jake LaTurner. The murder of George Floyd was a tragedy. And I completely respect and will defend the right of people to peacefully protest throughout this country. But what we cannot have is violence in our streets that results in the destruction of property and even murder. We need law and order in this country. I think Kansans agree with me on this topic. And the way you're going to get to law and order is not through defunding the police as Mayor De La Isla has supported. I also think that it's a very dangerous road to go down to try to rewrite our history in this country. The mayor sits on the board of Washburn University that just removed statues of Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. Trying to rewrite our history is not going to solve the race problems in this country. Michelle De Laysa. You know, I absolutely I am a law-loving citizen, and I, even though I support the free speech of citizens of the United States by peacefully protesting, I would never support any rioting or defacing or destruction in our country. And I think it's important that all of us understand that. In order for us to get to the point in which we have more just communities, we need to start talking about preventative issues. How do we provide early childhood education? How do we ensure that the social determinants of health are being taken care of early on so that our students, our children in our communities are able to succeed and they are able to fulfill their God-given abilities that they had? We have to ensure that everybody in this state, in this country, has access to opportunity. Mr. LaTurner. Something else that's happened since the tragic death of George Floyd is that our law enforcement officials feel demoralized. And I've talked to law enforcement officials throughout this district and throughout this state. And what they tell me is that they are having trouble retaining good quality law enforcement officers and they're having trouble recruiting. Uh, if you're a young person that wanted to go into law enforcement before with the way that the media and liberal extremists are talking about our law enforcement officers, um, we've got to do better. Leadership counts. And what the mayor of Topeka has said about law enforcement and the defunding of law enforcement is unacceptable. Ms. De La Isla. You know, I absolutely love my police officers. There's a reason that I was walking side by side to my chief of police. And I will continue supporting my law department. However, that being said, we must acknowledge that the death of George Floyd, just as the one of Breonn Taylor and so many other individuals that have perished at the hands of bad cops, are able to be taken to justice. We must talk about these issues and we must address them because hiding them doesn't help anybody. Mr. LaTurner. I totally agree that when we find a bad apple or two, they need to be dealt with and dealt with swiftly. But it would be a mistake to allow a bad apple or two to paint the entire profession. These are brave men and women putting their lives on the line every single day and they deserve our respect. Ms. DeLisa, anything else? All right. Well, that ends the second segment of the forum. We, we will return after the final segment of our debate for more questions and the closing statements from the candidates seeking your vote now through November 3rd. Barbara Bollier says she's bipartisan, but votes with Democrats over 90% of the time, making Bollier much more like extreme liberal Nancy Pelosi. Bollier and Pelosi support liberal government-controlled health care, 
a plan that could close 67 Kansas rural hospitals, raise taxes on Kansas workers more than $2,200 a year, and wipe out your employer-provided health insurance. Bollier Pelosi, Pelosi, Bollier. Wrong for Kansas. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. At Azure Credit Union, we believe applying for a car loan should be easy. Well, the trunk's big enough to hold all their gear. Sweet. That's why we've made applying online for a car loan even more convenient for you. Ready to sign your paperwork online? Yes. Now you can apply and sign online for your auto loan and many of our other great services. Whether you know us from the drive through lane, the lobby, online, or through your screen, we love helping you and our community. Azura Credit Union is above and beyond banking. At the Floor Project, yes, we have more floors than any home center. Yes, we install or show you how, and yes, we offer free design services. But most importantly, the four project stands are lower prices. Pet Proof Carpet, Mohawk Soft Appeal. Their price, $399. Our price, $239 a foot installed. It's the final week to save at the Floor Project. Check us out. Downtown Topeka, safely open for business. Topeka, come enjoy our downtown. Live, work, play. Azura Credit Union, proudly serving local businesses. Meet Jax, a happy dog from Salina. A mass was discovered on Jax's neck. His family veterinarian suspected a thyroid tumor and referred him to the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University. The VHC oncology team worked with other K-State specialists to diagnose and offer treatment options for Jax, including surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Thanks to effective treatment by the team at the Veterinary Health Center, Jax has been cancer-free for three years. The Veterinary Health Center, to discover, to teach, to heal. Well, welcome back to the second district congressional debate and our final segment. We asked this in the primary debate and we're gonna ask it again. A poll by Morning Consult revealed 68% of Republicans and 71% of conservatives support protecting from deportation dreamers or illegal immigrants brought here as children. Do you support decoupling this issue from the border wall and passing those protections? And Michelle De La Isla begins with this one. Absolutely, no questions asked. Dreamers came into this country without any choice of their own, and all they know is our language, our culture, um, and absolutely, I would be very happy to decouple this and figure out a pathway to citizenship for all our dreamers. Mr. LaTurner. This is another big area of disagreement between myself and the mayor. The mayor supports citizenship for illegal immigrants. You can go to her website where she says it. That's an extreme position even within her own party. This is a generous nation. We have over a million legal immigrants every single year, more than any country in the world. I don't know anyone that doesn't celebrate their hard work and their sacrifice to come into this country and to do it in a legal way. What the mayor's policy proposal suggests is that illegal immigrants, who their first action is to break our laws, is able to go to the front of the line and cut in line in front of these folks that have worked so hard to become citizens. That's not right. We have every right as a nation to control our borders and control who comes into this country. Uh, it's a big difference of opinion and one that I think the voters in this district care a lot about. Ms. De La Isla? You know, when I've spoken with farmers across our beautiful state, I've learned that they highly depend on ensuring that they can find immigrant workers. And that is what I support a pathway to citizenship for. As working in Wichita State University, I learned very promptly that there is no way, unless you come in through an H-1B visa or through marriage, for you to be able to get citizenship into our great country. What I'm advocating for is for individuals to have a way that if they're legal and are coming here to work, to find a way to stay. Mr. LaTurner. The, the mayor's trying to confuse the issue here. I have the support of the Kansas Farm Bureau, which I'm really proud to have. We can have a robust guest work program in this country that is strictly enforced. That is not the same thing as allowing people to illegally come into this country and to get automatic citizenship. The mayor isn't even talking about legal status. She's talking about a pathway to citizenship. 
Ms. DeLisa, anything else? I am referring to legal status, and I apologize if my remarks made it sound like it was not, but I do believe in figuring out a legal status for individuals that are coming here to work and to help our economy and to make our country more diverse. All right, let's talk uh, gun safety. Do you support any new gun safety laws? And keep this to 30 seconds, please. We'll start with Mr. LeTurner. The Second Amendment is a, a constitutional right that we have in this country, and I have been a fierce defender of it uh, every step of the way. Uh, the mayor has supported something very, very radical, where she says that she wants the ability at the state and local level to make gun control laws on her own. Um, the constitutional right is guaranteed to every American citizen. Uh, it is the constitutional right, something that I will support and defend. The mayor of Topeka and I have a big difference of opinion on this issue. Ms. De La Isla. I absolutely support the Second Amendment for anybody that has proven, just like I have to take a driver's license test to ensure that I am safe with my vehicle, every person that wants to have access to a firearm should ensure that they are safe. That's all we're asking for, safety. If you have a history of uh, abusing anybody or violence, you should not have access to a firearm. It's as simple as that. Mr. Latourne, anything else? The second, seconds? The, the second Amendment is a critical right in this country. I will support it every single time. You can count on me to do that. The mayor has supported multiple uh, extreme gun control policies at mayoral conferences uh, across the country. We have a difference of opinion on this issue, and I think the people of this district are with me. Anything else, Ms. De La Isla? I just stand by the fact that I am a huge supporter of the Second Amendment as long as you are able to keep your firearms safe and that you are safe with them. And as long as my police officers in my community don't have to pick up 111 guns from cars because they were left there irresponsibly. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions, so we move on to the closing statements. Candidates will have up to one minute for their statement, and we start with Jake LeTurner because I threw in a bonus question there. We'll stick to the order. Mr. LeTurner. That's fair. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I appreciate anyone that took time out of their busy evening to listen to two politicians yammer on. Uh, I think it's important that we learn the differences of opinion on this debate stage. And there are big differences. Tonight we learned uh, the reason why Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Elizabeth Warren, and other liberal radical politicians are sending in hundreds of thousands of dollars into this district to make sure that Mayor De La Isla is elected. These folks couldn't find Kansas on a map but they definitely want to have another liberal vote come from Kansas. I know that you don't agree with that. I see a different path forward. We need to make sure that we beat COVID-19, that we find a cure for this, that we bring our supply chain back from China, that we get this economy up and running again, that we allow Americans to keep more of their hard earned money, that we make sure that we safeguard social security and Medicare for our seniors to make sure that this country gets back to where it needs to be. Ultimately, Suzanne and I have four young kids who are watching tonight, Ava, Joe, Maggie, and Gus. We want to make this country a better place for them. Thank, Thank you, and God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Michelle De La Isla. You know, when I came to the state of Kansas, I came trying to better my life. I was a single mom that have just overcome homelessness and came to Wichita State to get my degree. And Kansas taught me to find my voice. And I will never forget the fact that I was homeless, the fact that I had a chronic condition without health care, and the fact that I had to raise my children on my own, struggling in order for me to be able to be successful. You see, the story of Kansas is ad astra per aspera. And that's why I say that my story is the Kansas story. If you notice, there's a big difference between us debating here. I have focused on issues. Not once have I ever attacked my opponent or talked about anybody that's supporting them. My only concern right now is you. I don't care about our parties. You could be a Republican and independent, and I am still going to serve you with dignity and with grit. This is what Kansans are all about, the values of love and compassion and hard work. And I am here to make sure that we have health care, that we overcome this pandemic, and that we do so together. Thank you. Whether it's by mail ballot, early voting, or in person, remember to make your voice heard. Thank you very much. I'm Bob Beatty.